Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. So in this video, I just want to do a few brief reviews of movies that I've seen over the last few weeks. Uh, first up, I've got this one, A Lonely Place to Die from 2011, and this one stars Melissa George, and that's the reason I picked this uh, video up. I had seen Melissa George before in the uh, Groundhog Day style horror thriller called Triangle, and I really, really enjoyed that film. Um, so yeah, I was interested to see more films with Melissa George. This one is pretty good. It's a climbing thriller if you like so there's a group of friends out on a climbing trip uh, and they make a discovery at the top of a mountain uh, that relates to a kidnapped girl and then find themselves being hunted down now this film uh, definitely has some good climbing sequences and some really bone crunching falls which are, are really quite well executed um, Sean Harris co-stars in this as one of the villains and he kind of sleepwalks through the role it's the kind of easy role for him to play um, the film is quite thrilling but it does take a detour in the final act and sort of splits the plot into two different strands and some of the um, main characters who you expect to, to confront each other at the end of the film actually don't uh, so from that point of view it was a bit disappointing um, but yeah like I say for the climbs and for the uh, bone crunching falls this was quite good Next up, we've got this one, Chuck, which is from 2016, and this stars Leif Schreiber as the heavyweight boxer Chuck Wepner, who went the distance with Muhammad Ali, and uh, that fight became the inspiration for Sylvester Stallone's Rocky. Um, now, the thing is, have you heard of Chuck Wepner? Probably not because the Rocky story is really the, the story that everyone likes to follow and remember more. And it's got a great Bill Conti theme tune, which uh, Chuck Wepner did not have follow him around during his life. So yeah, his story is a little bit more tragic and sad. Um, it's a really interesting film nonetheless, but it is obviously overshadowed by Rocky. Now, uh, the cast here includes Naomi Watts, Elizabeth Moss, Ron Perlman, Jim Gaffigan, uh, and it has some interesting performances as well. Pooch Hall plays Muhammad Ali. I wasn't so keen on his performance as Muhammad Ali. And we have Morgan Spector as Sylvester Stallone. Now, Morgan Spector's performance is quite interesting. Uh, I was glad to see that he avoided, if you like, what would be the more obvious mimicry of Sylvester Stallone's voice, uh, and he plays it quite straight. Uh, he might not necessarily look the part of Sylvester Stallone, but I did like his performance. Yeah, so this is a good drama. Uh, like I say, it is perhaps a bit underwhelming because the Rocky story is really the one that everyone's going to enjoy much more. Um, but still, a good film, great performance from Leif Schreiber. Now, if you like the thought of a character creating a distraction by stripping naked and putting a stick of celery up his bum, then I have the movie for you, and it is MacGruber from 2010. And they repeat that joke, I think, three times throughout the movie, and eat the celery as well. Ugh. Um, now, this is a kind of a lampoon of um, series such as MacGyver, but for me, I would much rather just watch the outdated, cheesy kind of fun of a show like that than watch the kind of crude humour that's in this. All of the jokes here really fell flat for me, and I know that this has been... Um, uh, put into another series I think that came out uh, not too long ago I'm not going to be interested in watching that I know humour is an interesting thing I mean for instance I've seen uh, Christian Wig in Barb and Star go to the Vista del Mar and I had a really good time with that lots of laughs but everything here just fell completely flat for me I did not enjoy MacGruber Next, and we have this French film from 2011 called The Fairy. Um, now, this is really quite a fun and very quirky movie. Um, it concerns a woman who just turns up at a hotel in Le Havre and announces to the hotel manager that she's a fairy and that she's going to grant him three wishes. Um, I won't spoil what happens then, but really this is just a kind of a slapstick performance art kind of style movie with uh, lots of really uh, interesting scenes. Not all of the humour works in this but it's constantly visually uh, inspired in terms of how they create their sight gags uh, this really owes a lot to silent cinema and jack tatty the likes of that um, uh, yeah very very quirky um, it won't be for everybody at all but uh, yeah i enjoyed the fairy 
And next we have Child's Play from 1988. Now, I guess I really shouldn't need to say too much about this film. Loads of people know Child's Play and love it, and they love the whole franchise. There's been loads of Chucky movies. Um, Now, for me, yes, it's a great concept, the idea of a possessed killer doll. Isn't that fun? Um, But the actual movie itself, I think, is pretty poorly executed. The whole basis on which Chucky gets possessed in the first place it's really poorly handled. There's very little tension. The humour isn't that good. Um, but the practical effects concerning Chucky itself are good, fun. I liked all the facial expressions. Um, but yeah, for me, director Tom Holland has done a lot better with Fright Night. I'd much prefer that movie. Child's Play, like I say, great idea. Not such a good movie. Next, and from 1997, we have Peter Hyams' The Relic. Uh, So Peter Hyams, the director of movies such as Capricorn One, Outland, 2010, The Year We Made Contact, The Presidio, Time Cop, uh, movies like that. Uh, Yeah, I have a great time watching uh, The Relic. Um, So yeah, 1997, so this was still made on film, and uh, Peter Hyams was the cinematographer on this as well. A lot of people really criticise this movie for being too dark, but for me, I actually love that I think when movies are set in the dark and this one is set in the Chicago Museum with all the power out and there's a creature that's on the loose Um, but yeah when things are in the dark It is a dark movie, and so you have to really strain your eyes to see what's going on here. Uh, And uh, for me, that really adds to the tension here. Uh, I just really enjoy this film. It's got Tom Sizemore as a detective, Penelope Ann Miller uh, as a biologist, and they're, like I say, trapped inside this museum whilst this creature is on the loose. Great sound design with the creature. Great effects, courtesy of Stan Winston. Lots of heads go flying in this. Uh, Yeah, good fun times perhaps not uh, a masterpiece by any means because uh, it still resembles better films that have come before it Uh, but it's definitely better than its reputation I suppose like I say people do tend to criticize this one too much for being too dark Uh, but no I really love The Relic And then next, and perhaps just leading on from what I just said about The Relic, uh, we have The Cave from 2005. Now, this one's also set in the dark because obviously we're here in a deep cave here uh, with a whole load of explorers who get trapped and then find themselves being preyed upon by uh, vicious creatures that are down there. Now, like I say, this is 2005, so we're now in the digital uh, arena. Um, uh, And so we can get to see more of, of our surroundings here. There's much more light Uh, in the film so that takes away from some of the tension here Um, I do quite like this film again it's one that's been heavily criticized it came out the same year as The Descent which definitely is a more atmospheric and more gripping movie uh, directed by Neil Marshall Uh, but yeah this one is still quite good fun nonetheless Cole Hauser in the cast here along with Lena Headey uh, who went on to play Cersei Lannister in um, Game of Thrones The director and the cinematographer on this movie both worked previously before as second unit director and camera operator on the Matrix trilogy as well as Dark City. Um, So yeah, they've definitely got some uh, knowledge behind them when it came to making this film. I really like the sets in this. The problem with it is the sense of scale. These people are underground and at some stages they're going down huge deep caverns at other times they're crawling along um, narrow confined tunnels and we're never quite sure where they are so again that takes away from a lot of the tension and also when it comes to the creature effects uh, although they're quite well designed there's a lot of separation in the edits if you like between the creatures and the cast and so we never fully feel that they're integrated together Uh, so again that takes away from the tension Um, but still the cave quite good fun Next, really lovely film from 2004, and it's The Station Agent. Peter Dinklage in this one plays a train enthusiast loner uh, who inherits an abandoned station uh, and thinks it's great that uh, he can be there by himself, uh, but then gets interrupted by his neighbours and... uh, gradually forms friendships with them. We have Bobby Carnival in this, uh, Patricia Clarkson and Michelle Williams. Really, really great performances from all of them. Really nice tone to the movie, really nice pace, really enjoyable, The Station Agent. Next, and it's a film that I've seen a few people really champion this as being a great movie, um, and they've suggested I watch it as well, and it's this one, Brimstone, from 2016. 
Uh, this has Guy Pearce as a very vengeful preacher in this. Now, I wouldn't really call it a Western. It's set in the old American West, but it is an intense and very cruel drama. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure about this one yet. I'm going to need to watch it again. Uh, really good performances from Dakota Fanning um, and uh, Amelia Jones, who went on to be in the film Coda. Um, but yeah, there's a intense cruelty this to this movie, which I'm just not sure is really warranted uh, or really that there's enough to the script to really... Um, or warrant all of this i don't know i just uh, will need to watch this one again um the film is split into four biblical chapters if you like um and it uh moves the story around in terms of its time frame so that you're then there to piece the events together um it's definitely an interesting movie it's uh, has some great cinematography and locations in it um but yeah i'm just not sold on the actual story at the moment uh, so yeah i will definitely be watching this one again at some point and next, from 2002, we have the movie John Q, which stars Denzel Washington. Now, Denzel Washington plays a father in this. His son needs a heart transplant. Uh, Denzel's character doesn't have the right insurance for that, and so he ends up taking hospital staff hostage so that his son can get his heart transplant. Wow, this is a monumentally dumb movie. Now, you've got to appreciate I come from the UK, and when it comes to films that criticise uh, the health system or social services, then we have Ken Loach to make those films, and he really does it in a biting uh, way and actually provokes debate and sometimes even um, a change in policy. Uh, John Q is just a kind of dumb movie uh, that's a bit of a crowd pleaser for sure um, and it really just goes to show how good Denzel Washington is because he really elevates this uh, story and makes it watchable and entertaining and we also have uh, Robert Duvall and um, Ray Liotta in the supporting cast as well and they're both pretty good as well so yeah an entertaining watch but an incredibly dumb script and then finally from 2022, it's the movie After Sun and directed by Charlotte Wells and starring Paul Mescal and Frankie Corio. This is a really, really beautiful movie, a really heartfelt kind of movie, an intimate movie. It's a reflection on a memory of a vacation between a father and a daughter 20 years ago and the realisation later in life that perhaps she never knew her father as well as uh, she thought she did at the time of the vacation. He's trying to keep his depression and personal issues separate from her. Um, really beautifully told. Don't expect a proper storyline, if you like, on this. Uh, this one plays out as if you're watching intimate, uh, spontaneous footage from a camcorder at times. Beautifully, beautifully played between Mescal and Frankie Corio. Really good little young actress she is. Um, yeah, I absolutely love this movie. It's uh, really heartfelt um, and just beautifully presented by Charlotte Wells. How she managed to frame some of these shots is really quite fantastic. So yeah, so that's After Sun. Okay, thanks very much for joining me on these brief reviews. I don't really want to talk negatively about movies, uh, but I'm just trying to express my reactions to some of them. Um, but like I say, it's just my opinion. Hopefully, and I know some of you really enjoy these movies uh, a lot more than I did. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. I really do uh, appreciate the comments uh, that people leave on my channel. Uh, I, I do read them. I do respond to them. So thanks very much for doing that. Um, hopefully, I will see you again for some some more videos. I know sometimes review videos are not as popular as the haul videos, but hopefully over time that can sort of balance out a bit more. Uh, please do come back for some more. Okay, hopefully I'll see you again. All the best to you. Take care. Bye-bye.